All right. These two large boxes arrived this last week while I was traveling in France. And let's take a look at what's inside of them. All right, the big package is here. And this is an Atari ST wrapped in orange bubble wrap. However, I just will point out to anyone who, are sh who is shipping vintage computers, this is an excellent box. That's an excellent wrapping job for the Atari ST. However, if you see all the space inside, one of the things I noticed when I picked this guy up is that the Atari in the bubble wrap was shifting all over the place. I'm hoping that there's no damage, but this kind of packing can be a recipe for things to shift around and jumble around a whole lot more than they probably should. This is example number two. While it isn't perfectly packed based on what, <laughs> how I like to do it, it is actually much better than the previous one. I, I just, again, um, for those of you who don't ship these computers very often, which is probably most everyone, you really wanna make sure they're snug, they're wrapped in bubble wrap first and foremost, and then packed in a box slightly oversized, it doesn't have to be massively oversized, but then have packing material to hold it snugly with the box so it doesn't shift around during shipping. Greetings and welcome to the Power Vintage. Those two boxes we took a look at, they contained a 520ST. This is actually a 520ST that I worked on previously that I added some extra RAM to. However, after it was shipped back to its owner, it started having some keyboard issues, keyboard and mouse issues. Like when the mouse gets, uh, it makes the noise, it makes the noise, the, the clicking noise that usually signifies that the keyboard is disconnected, but it'll work to some extent. And with the mouse plugged in, it just moves the mouse cursor just randomly on the screen automatically. Okay, no idea what that is. Well, I have some ideas, I'm gonna take a look at it. Likewise, a similar situation in this guy. This owner also has issues with this keyboard. Neither the keyboard nor the mouse function. So again, I have a few ideas on what that could be. I'm going to open up and take a look at it a little bit and, and kind of dig into this. It, it, this is actually kind of surprising because to be fair, I've had very, very little issues with the keyboard other than the rubber domes and the solder joints for the joystick and mouse ports. Really, these guys, I haven't had too many issues with the keyboards. They seem to be pretty darn robust. So my guess is there could be a bad IC or potentially some solder connections that need to get fixed. All right, let's dig into these. All right, I am going to start with this 520ST. This is the short one without the floppy drive in it and with the joystick and mouse ports on the right, the right side. This one is the one that I worked on previously that has a four megabyte upgrade to it, as well as a TOS 1.04, a set of chips that was upgraded to it. I tested it very thoroughly. I know it, I knew, knew it worked perfectly. There were some issues when it was shipped. It sounded like um, I helped the, the owner through it a little bit. However, there is that mouse and potentially keyboard issue here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna try to replicate that as much as I can. So first, is, first things first, I'm not plugging any new media. I'm not even plugging the diagnostic cartridge. We're just gonna boot to the de desktop and see what happens. Like I said, um, the owner said that it has the pinging, pinging sound that typically indicates that the keyboard is not connected. So here we go. Wow, that is interesting. This is a possessed Atari ST. I have never seen anything like that. All right, so you hit the, the keyboard and it gets rid of the pinging sound. Something weird happened here. <laughs> I mean, really weird, as you can see from the possessed uh, mouse cursor. Oh, I can move the mouse. It takes some signals but it's there's something going on here okay we're gonna first flip this guy over remove the screws open them up 
and take a look inside. Remember, short screws go in the front, longer screws go in the back. The 520ST, this short computer, has six total case screws, whereas those that have the floppy drive in, in them, the 520STF, as well as 1040STF, have four in the back and three in the front for the case. All right, let me compare, just kind of show you this again. You may have noticed, I may have shown this before, they look, if you were just looked at them by themselves, you wouldn't necessarily know the notice the difference in length. However, side by side, it's clear. Don't use these long ones up front. It will damage your case. Pop the top. Uh oh, you have the RF shielding in here. First things first, one of the first things I'm going to look at is just check and make sure all the solder points seem to be here. This has got a nice strain relief little zip tie, so I'm not, I don't doubt it's been pulled out of here. But what I'm going to do is I am going to take my 520ST keyboard. And try it out here okay be right back there are no rubber domes in this guy and as you can see i've pilfered it for various different keycaps but this should work just fine i won't be able to type with it but i'll be able to see if the mouse will work properly and see if it's a keyboard issue or if it's something else my guess it's probably the, it's the keyboard itself In. And here we go. All right, there's no pinging. Oh, there is a pinging. It is not the keyboard. It is something else that's happening here. That is weird. Maybe it's the ROMs. That was really weird. I would have expected it was a keyboard issue. It seems like it's not. All right, it's time to... <laughs> this is becoming a little more uh, interesting than I was expecting. I was hoping this would just be a simple chip swap on the keyboard. But... Actually, you know what? There's one more thing I should probably try. Maybe it's a mouse thing. We're going to try one of my mice. Here's a different mouse. Let's see. Okay. This is his keyboard. No pinging, mouse works fine. We're gonna boot up the diagnostic cartridge and test out the keyboard. Just make sure all the keys are functioning properly. All right, where is the keyboard? There we are, okay. Yeah, keyboard's looking good. And let's go with the mouse. Yeah, mouse is looking good too. Okay. This is a this is not a keyboard issue. This is a mouse issue. Fun. All right, this is a different one. I'm going to put this button this guy back up. And then we're going to take a look at the other 1040 STE 
that I have. I just want to do a little quick diagnostic. And then I'll start working on the mouse for this guy. All right, I'm not going to plug this guy in because because of the case damage and it sounds like some things like the floppy drive, oh, the floppy drive is completely loose inside. I'm not sure if the PSU is as well. I'm going to disassemble it first, get it down to its parts, and then do some testing from there. So let's open this guy up. Oh, that makes me sad hearing that kind of stuff. Oh yeah, that was a uh, one of the floppy drive stands. Looks like we have all the holes are out of the case. Okay. Oh boy. Oh, that just every time I hear that moving around, uh, it sounds like the floppy drive was totally disconnected while it was shipped. So uh, probably been. bouncing around for quite a while. All right, let's take a look. Thank goodness. Oh, just a little bit of damage down here, some physical damage. None of the connections appear to be damaged. All right, top case is looking okay. No major cracks, thank goodness. <laughs> uh, all right, a keyboard rubber dome. Maybe he swapped out some rubber domes. We'll put that off to the side. Disconnect the keyboard. Take a look at a few things to begin with. Uh, I don't see any issues here. Just looking at the board itself, looking at the connections. I don't, nothing jumps out at me at the moment. Oh, it looks like there's something was done here. Maybe some rework was done to the to this keyboard. All right, we'll set this keyboard off to the side. I want to. I'm going to remove the hole. Oh, he's left the screws here. All right, interesting. This is a later STE board. Why do I say it's later? Well, at least based on my experience and most of the, the STE boards that I found, the earlier ones, they have a socketed 68,000 CPU over here. In this case, we have the CPU solder to the board. We don't have an actual spot for a separate blitter. Oftentimes what you'll have is you'll have the blitter combined with, another, with other chips on the board, but you'll have a socket or an area that's pinned out. It looks like it might be pinned out here, but it's not set up at all to solder in a socket and actually put a blitter chip in here Man, physically. So this looks like a, this is CA4041177. All right, cool. Yeah, 1991. 1991 is a very, that's a much later board. Okay, cool. I'm not looking at this RAM. I My guess is this is probably one megabyte only, just judging from the looks of the, the RAM there. I am going to take known working PSU and known working keyboard and boot this guy up. The diagnostics cartridge will yell at me because it doesn't like, it's a, it's a mega ST STF. Diagnostic cartridge. Actually, I won't even do that. I'm going to just plug in this guy and we'll just move to the desktop and play around there. All right, give me a second here. of course. All right. Hard drive installed. Keyboard 
no working keyboard working, no power supply here. We will flip the switch. Keyboard light on. Ooh. That's not happy. I'm hoping that this didn't damage anything. This is rolling around free. My guess is that that might be the cause. Shorting out part of the board. Let's see. Sure looks like that was what was causing the issue, doesn't it? Whew, okay. <laughs> Lesson learned. Oh. It's not detecting not detecting the keyboard at all. That is interesting. And this is a known working keyboard. Well, let's see what it happens when it boots to the desktop here. Interesting. All right. That could just simply be that there's no disk drive attached. That's my guess. Actually. We got the diagnostic cartridge in there. It's going to throw up and say it doesn't like it, but that's okay. We'll be, we'll be fine. It should at least get us to some stuff. It'll, yes. Blah, 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 blah. That's fine. All right. Yep. Okay. No keyboard at all here. It, it, it's showing errors just because it's in a target. So I want to take a look at these two chips here. I want to take a look at the connector on the bottom side of the board. Much fiddling, I was able to get this off. I have been able to get them off before. Sometimes they just slide off relatively easily. In this case, it did not. What you have to do, I don't know if you can see this very well. These little tabs you need to bend out so that they're not gripping into the audio output and the RF output. Or at least loosen a number of them. Okay. Next thing here is now we're going to pull the motherboard out of its little bottom RF shielding tray. There we go. Now we can see the underside of the motherboard. Boom. Look, looks good. Off the side. And now we're going to take a close look. A little bit of fuzz. At our keyboard connector. As well as these two chips. These connections here. Make sure there's nothing, no dry solder points there. Not seeing anything myself. I'll just look down in person. There could be something here. I could reflow this guy. The thing is, the keyboard is getting is clearly getting power. I say reflow this guy. This guy looks a little funny. But the keyboard's getting power because it's lighting up the little indicator light, both the hard drive indicator light as well as the power light. So it's getting power. There's just something, there's no signals coming to or from, or their signals are getting stopped somewhere. Or not being interpreted properly. Yeah, what I will do is I'm going to first start off by reflowing this and these chip connectors. See if that gets me anywhere. So what we have here, I've been playing around with this quite a bit, right? So 
these two 6850 chips, actually this one down here, this the top one is connected to MIDI. As I looked at the, the schematic, this bottom one is connected to the keyboard, specifically the RX and TX signals. So I have tested for continuity and it tests out just fine. Let's just, I think this is the five volt, right? Yeah, it's five volts. This should be connected to pin two. There we are, pin two. And then L227, and I don't think I can get it to sound up top. I'd have to flip it over, but it is connected to this 6850. Now, um, a couple of things, one thought. This resistor is bad, maybe. I think that's unlikely, but that's a possibility. This 6850 chip could be bad as well. I don't think that's the case either, but that's something else we could test out for as well. All right, so let's keep, keep going down this path and start digging in a little more. So what I'm going to do is I am going to pull out this resistor and just test it. Just to see this on the off chance. I, you know, I think that's probably pretty slim that that's the case, but let's move you over so we get a better view of it on that resistor in 210. All right, now we're gonna test that resistor. It should be a 10 kilo ohm resistor is what it should be. And let's get everything situated. And we can test this out real quick. Yeah, 10 kilo ohm or 9.95 resistor tests out fine perfect unfortunate <laughs> for i was hoping that would be again another quick solution quick solutions aren't always the case all right so i did a bunch of testing i made an educated guess this is the 6850 that connects and works in tandem with a controller on the keyboard in order to fu function, the keyboard, mouse, joystick, et cetera, to function. So I removed the chip in question and I had a socket. So while the socket is not exactly the right size, as you can see from the four extra empty pins here, it does fit, fit in the area. There's a lot of room over here, so I figured it'd be fine. I popped out two of the pins on the other side and I did have, I actually have two of these extra ones on hand, salvaged from a, another Atari ST. All right, and we will pop this guy in. Make sure it goes in properly. Here we go. I think this will work. I hope this will work. Uh, let me see here. Plug in the keyboard. The floppy drive doesn't seem to work, so we're going to grab a GoTech here. Plug that in. Plug that in. And we'll just set that down right there. We need to plug in the power supply. Flip the switch. We got the lovely boot screen. And hopefully, hopefully, when I put it, when the RAM test push starts, oh, oh, oh yeah, there we go. All right, press the keyboard again. There we go. Lovely. Now, I'm gonna run another thing real quick. I want to test 
the keyboard and mouse. All right. Driven. Rather than using the diagnostic cartridge, we are using the side cart, and I'm going to emulate a ROM image from Wi-Fi. And we are going to find a diagnostic cartridge. STE diagnostic. There we go. Boom. All right. We have the owner's keyboard here. As you can see, it's a short connector version. Well, let's pop this up and we'll do a keyboard test and just see which keys work and which ones don't. All right. Okay. Oh, that's weird. No six, no seven. Uh, okay, there's some weirdness going on here. So there might be something more associated with this keyboard. Let's see, does the mouse work? Yes, it does look like it's... No, it's just going one direction. So the mouse needs some, some loving as well. All right, fun stuff. Time to take apart the keyboard now. Man, this is just becoming a whole load of fun. There's at least one connection that is foobarred up. These look really rough. And looks like some funky reflowing has been taking place. So I am going to reflow the reflow. And yeah, it looks like there's also another. That looks totally foobarred up as well. So I'm going to spend some time working on these connections. That might be all that was causing the issues. Maybe, maybe not. I don't think so. I think there might be something else. But we start with that. All right, just an update. Uh, these solder pads are okay for the most part. Um, this is the, the joystick, joystick one. Joystick zero over here on the other hand. The solder pads were, looks like overheated. Uh, someone had tried to, I think, reflow them and they got way too hot and they're all lifted. All right, so what I'm going to be doing is you see, I've, I've already done a little solder bridge connection between the two of the points here. I'm actually going to take a few basically resistor legs like this and join those up. All right, wish me luck. All right, it is not pretty at all, but I have connected all of those pads again. Um, I've tested all these pads. I'm thinking at least the mouse is working. Once we get the mouse working, which I think is what the case is, it might have been interrupting other connections the way it was. The, there were pads that weren't connected to anything. I'm hoping that's what the, the, that'll solve all the problems. It probably won't, but I'm going to at least try. So here we go. Let's take a look. We're booting up. We'll likely get to the desktop, probably because it's not going to like this. Ooh, let me just... I will just take one of these. There we go. Was able to get that done. No. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a known working mouse. I thought I tested the mouse, but maybe not. Tested the, uh, the person who sent the mouse. Mouse is mouse, however you want to put it. All right, let's test my mouse. Nope. Single direction. Not fun. Okay. I'm going to investigate some more. I'm sure there's something else. All right. So I toned out all the traces for the various different letters. So the letters that aren't working are G, H, and in that general vicinity. So as, as you can see, on, I'll show you on the schematic kind of where those fall. 
Well, what it looked like is as I was tracing it back, I checked all the traces, all the lines, everything toned up perfectly. Uh, resistors, diodes were working fine, getting all the right connections. The one, I mean, there isn't a whole lot on here that could go wrong. There's this chip here. I've already tested it out. I actually have a, a, a backup on one of my other computers. It didn't change anything. The last thing was this logic chip, the LS744S, the LS744N, excuse me. And so I decided to remove it. Just snipped it out, came out real easily. And I have a series of other similar chips, logic chips, here. And uh, I, what I did is I, put, I did put in round pin sockets in case I need to try some other stuff. But what we'll do is we'll just fit this guy in here and see where we go. All right, there we are. We have it in. Let's put it back in the computer and then we can test it out again. So if we'll first test out the keyboard and make sure we're getting the right key presses. We're able to get the, especially the H and the G, those are nice and easy to find. They're all on the same line, basically on the same circuit. So what I have is I have this lovely little dome. We'll use the dome to check. So I need to, I'm in the diagnostic cartridge. And so I need to hit the letter K. This goes escape, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Then it's diagonal down to here. That's the K for keyboard. We'll just tap K and we're in the keyboard. And so we'll just tap to take K again, right? We get K, K responds, J responds. Now I want to go to H. H works. I think I did it. I think it did it. Yep. We are in this. These are closing out nicely. Perfect. All right. So the next thing is, is let's power this off and then I will see if that fixed the mouse too. So I'll start with a known working mouse just because just isolate variables. Don't change, change two things, too many things at the same time. Let's move these other chips over here. This is the bad one. Bad one goes in the garbage. All right. All right. Now let's go back to the K. Getting multiple directions. All right, the key clicks work. So the last step is I'm going to disconnect the diagnostic cartridge, boot into TOS, and I will use the gentleman whose mouse, the guy who sent his mouse with the computer. All right, so many things here. And we will boot to the desktop. There we go. Oh, I'm going to have to, well, actually, I can just push on the letter K. There we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. This keyboard was an absolute disaster. <laughs> hey, but I got it working. We got bodge wires. We got uh, replacing a chip. We got changing a chip on the board, the motherboard as well. Whew. Everything all together, it worked out. We're able, to, and, and thank goodness, I had all the other spare parts to kind of just... Uh, isolate where the actual variables were. But that is, a, I think, a win here. All right. 
we're almost out of power on my phone camera, phone camera, whatever you want to call it. We are now booting from the ACSI to STM. And we are good to go. This computer passes the Ultima 4 test with a hard drive. Floppy drive does not pass. It is a failure. All right, done All with right, that. Here we have that lovely mouse needing work. We're just gonna open it up, take a look at the inside, see if there's anything that's just glaringly obvious. But it's clear it's the mouse that's causing the issues. It almost looks like there's some sort of a short going on. So you just take out those two and then the lid will pop off. There we go. All right, looking from this side, this is right button. This is ground, this is plus five volts. All right, so let's just take a look and see what's going on. If I can find the ground, I would expect the ground is probably the black line here. No. I wouldn't be surprised if ground is the line that's not connected. All right, let's let's try one more time. I had the beeper off. Now I had the beeper on. No. Ground is connected just fine. All right. It's not floating free. Let's go with five volts, five volts. My guess is that it will be the red one just next to it, next to the ground. No. Well, maybe the five volt line isn't connected. Oh, five volts is not connected. That's a problem. That's my guess. That, that is my guess. My highly educated, but I think probably okay guess. I'm going to just try to manipulate this a little bit and see if I can't get the 5 volt to connect now. No, we're not getting anything. Let's do this. Let's measure the voltage from ground to what I think is five volts. I'm guessing it's five volts. All right. And yes, and the mouse is flying all over the place. There's negative five volts here. That's funky. Oh, that's probably because it's rolling all over the place. Oh, I had an idea, of course. Had the idea a little bit later. Um, just take a measurement of the five volt line versus this must. Now, obviously the different mice may operate a little differently, but still I would expect that there should be some connection there. So let's just try this. This is the five volt what I believe is the five volt since it's nice and red. Or not. Oh, there we are. All right, that is clearly the five volt and there is a connection there. 
I am pretty certain that it's just that we don't have the five volt connected on this guy, on the, uh, the mouse that isn't working. This is ground, ground to ground, working good. Okay, I'm now even more certain that the broken mouse or the, the flying mouse, whoo, the flying mouse, is uh, has an, a non-connected five volt line. And so it's just flying all over the place. All right, I think we're gonna end it here. I've actually heard back from the owner of this computer, this 1040 STE, and he's gonna have me send it back to him. He doesn't want me to try to, to tinker with the floppy drive anymore, which I'm fine to do because to be fair, those floppy drives, they can be a bear to fix. And with, sometimes they're easy, uh, sometimes they're easy, but a lot of times they're actually quite difficult, especially if they're, it's an alignment, a head alignment issue. That's an exercise in futility, but it works fine. And the cool thing about it between the two of these, we have two keyboards that totally work, which is fantastic. Uh, this one here was actually an amazing deep dive into the computer. Uh, a logic chip on the, the keyboard itself, uh, a, uh, a logic chip on the motherboard between the two of them, as well as some uh, making sure that a few connections were actually made as well. There's actually quite a bit of repair work on that guy. I'm, I'm pretty proud of that one. That one turned out nicely. On the flip side, this one here is an exercise in demonstrating that it wasn't the computer at all. It was the mouse that was causing the issues. And I'm pretty certain I know what it is. As I mentioned in the, vid in the earlier content, I believe it's that the five volt line is not connected or is tenuously connected because we were able to get it to, I was able to get it to work twice. And that was after, you know, just a lot of manipulation with the cord. My guess is that there's a broken line or a very damaged line with inside of the cord itself uh, for the five volt line to the, to the mouse. In testing and comparing with my own mice, that one, one of these is not like the other. And this is the one that's not like the others. So I'm uh, in contact back and forth with the owner of it to see what he wants me to do with it. If he wants me to just send it back as it is or try to stip, strip the lines and see if I can't dig out that, line, that little, little five volt line and see if I can't repair it. We'll see what he wants. But all in all, good news all around. We have two awesome working Atari SDs. All right. Thank you very much for watching this uh, investigation of the keywords. Have a great day. Bye.